So we've looked at making of the boilers and maintenance in service. And I've had a few questions online about how you light an engine and what happens between an engine being cold and going off shed. So that's what we're gonna do right now. It may surprise you to know that you can't just go to a steam engine, put a fire in it and wait a couple of hours and then take it away. It's something that can't really be done because of the size of a boiler and shouldn't be done for the sake of the boiler. These things realistically will put what's called a warming fire in a few days in advance. Welcome to Rockfleet. It's Thursday, the day before our autumn gala and it's a hive of activity here with lots of engines being prepared for service. So how do you actually light a fire? The first thing you need to do is check the engine, make sure it's actually fit for service. We get on the footplate, have a look at the gauge glasses, make sure there's enough water in there. As we saw in a previous episode, no water in an engine is a bad thing. Also check in the firebox as well to make sure it's in good state. Same again with the smoke box. Open the front door and have a look inside as well. Next thing we need to do is clean the grate. Now the grate itself is made up of little bars known as fingers with gaps in the middle, fire sits on top and so the air can get in underneath. When you burn coal, it breaks down but doesn't drop all the way through into the ash pan so you need to clean it out and get it fit for purpose. Here is a lump of coal. That wasn't supposed to be as sarcastic as it was turned out to be. It's made up of six constituents, nitrogen, oxygen, carbon, ash, sulfur and hydrogen or no cash for short. As coal breaks down, it's the hydrocarbons that actually give you heat, carbon gives you black smoke, uh, sulfur will give quite yellowy smoke and ash is just ash. Depending on where you get your coal from, the exact quantities will be very different. And you can get a substance called clinker, which is all the impurities in coal. They'll melt, solidify and block up your grate. So you won't really get any steam out of it. You'll probably run out of steam and you just won't have a good day. That's why you clean your fire. Now, lucky enough, when I was doing the initial inspection, my uh, cleaner Jack popped up on the footplate, so I gave him the opportunity to uh, light up. Definitely not me being lazy. The fire's now been cleaned. He's now going to lay a bed of coal, put some wood on top of it, and then chuck some lit paraffin soaked rags into there. And then that will start warming the engine through slowly. Since we've got a warming fire, we put it at the front of the engine, under the brick arch, which will start warming the engine up nice, slowly, and gently. The reason we do this is because A, it's more practical, because realistically you're not going to turn up, let's say on a cold winter's day, to a stone cold engine and make it out for service. Well, not until the very end of the day once everyone's gone home. The second reason is it's nicer to the boiler. These metal tubes are actually only fixed at the front end and they expand backwards as they get hot by about an inch. If you heat something up and cool it down and rapidly do that, it's going to stress, it's going to crack and your boiler's going to fail and your engine's going to be out of service. Now, we've taken the opportunity while we're here on the gala day to also have a look around, make sure everything's fit for service, so hopefully on Friday, everything's gonna crack on. So now we have a warming fire in it. Let's fast forward to Saturday morning. Ugh. Far too early for this in the morning. Good morning, guys. Welcome to Rockley. It is six o'clock on Saturday morning of the gala. We've been here for an hour now, lighting up engines to getting them ready for service. Now, we don't normally sign on at five. This is a kind of a gala thing. Uh, we normally treat ourselves to a line and sign on at half six. And you may notice I also said um, it is Saturday, not Friday. Uh, that's just the way the roster's felt. Today, I'm the standby fireman. Uh, there's a few of us around and we're supervising the cleaners as they light up. Now the cleaners are normally are assigned to a crew and they would normally go out with them but unfortunately due to social distancing we have to reduce the crew numbers down to just driver and fireman which is why we haven't been able to do things like driver experiences and that sort of thing. So to make the best of a bad situation we've come in early all the cleaners have been assigned a locomotive and their job is to prep it and then hand it over to the daytime crews in a good state. So they'll do the same as we did with a cold engine. Go around, they have a walk around the engine, check the smoke box, check the fire, check the water, clean the fire as well, and then start lighting up. And actually, since uh, these engines were actually in use yesterday, we can actually have a bit of clinker. Doesn't look like much. As I mentioned last time, 
coal is made up of nitrogen, oxygen, carbon, ash, sulfur, and hydrogen in varying quantities depending on where you actually get your coal from. Clinker essentially is to be impurities. And they melt when they get hot, fuse together, and form a sort of irony substance that sits on the grate. And it stops all that lovely uh, air getting up underneath. And essentially, the engine won't steam very well and vent, and you'll have a bad day either way. So that's why you have to clean the fire. Some engines have fixed grates, so you've got to get a clinker shovel in there and bring it all out, chuck it into a wheelbarrow. Some have rocking grates, some have drop grates as well, where essentially a portion of the grate drops away and you can rake everything in and down. So yes, they've now lit the fire and they're now slowly bringing it round into steam. And the good thing about having a hot engine is occasionally they will still have pressure on so you can use the blower. Now, as Andrew mentioned in the uh, Boilers Part 2 film, the blower is essentially a uh, loop or ring around the blast pipe, which is underneath the chimney. Lots of little holes drilled in it, put steam through it, steam goes up, draws the fire and hot air through, and essentially it makes the engine come around to steam quicker and also it means that the fire doesn't come out in the cab to say hello. So the ultimate question essentially we don't light up much differently so we still do a bed of coal but now if we got some space for blower we'll cover the whole fire lightly with coal. We'll then put some wood on top and then same again some lit rags, a bit of wood and then start feeding it slowly and bringing it round. Now, there's a few different ways to light a fire, many ways to skin a cat as the old adage goes. And it depends on the fireman, some people do it differently, but as long as you get your engine in steam and you're nice to the boiler, that's all that really matters. So, now we're just gonna leave it, and in a couple of hours time, these engines will be ready to move. So, let's start watching. Fast forward a couple of hours, it's now half past seven, the crews have started turning up and the engines have been handed over. Now all the engines have been steam, we need to do the checks. And the main one is to make sure A, nothing's leaking, and also that the injectors work. The injectors are a way of putting water in the boiler. If the injectors don't work, the engine does not go out and we have to dump the fire, take it out of steam. Looks like the Ivis just about to move off, move off. The sound you can hear now is the ejector. That's the air being sucked out of the vacuum system to take the brakes off. Which is actually, we'll do an episode on that in the near distant future. So, all there is now is to watch all the engines go off shed. So there you are. How's the light up a steam engine? Essentially, uh, chuck a bit of coal, wood, paraffin, soap bags on there and keep feeding it. But obviously, there's always a bit more to it. Now, since we're filming this on the gala weekend, 
I think that's a good enough excuse to end this episode with some footage along the line. So thank you so much for watching guys and I'll see you next time for another episode of Things You Now Know.